Okay, sorry about that. I had a phone call. A phone call on my cell phone telling me I had won $100 sweepstakes somewhere in Arizona, uh, Tucson, Arizona. And uh, when I asked them how the hell they got my damn cell phone number, they didn't want to talk about it. God, I hate spammers and scammers and telemarketers and politicians who will call you up about 30 freaking times asking for your vote. Jesus, get tired of people who I did not give my number to disturbing me on my phone. Anyway, sorry about that. Let's get back to chainsaws. Basically, uh, over my many years of cutting trees, I've come to the, the, the realization that when you buy cheap Chinese junk, that's all you get is cheap Chinese junk. And you're going to have to work on them right out of the box. If you buy one, uh, they have to comply to some pretty strict EPA regulations. So they, they crank these carburetor adjustments where they just barely crank up and run. So first thing you got to do when you buy a new chainsaw is take your handy dandy carburetor adjustment tool that you can get from Jack Small Engines and you gotta open up both jets about at least a quarter turn and the high speed maybe a little more uh, to get them to run right and, and to have the power that they're supposed to have. Now you can overdo it, but if you play around you'll find the sweet spot. So you have to tinker with them. Uh, these have, I don't know if the 391 does or not, but the one up, Today, I'm fixing to go buy a 280 CBE steel, and I'm getting rid of all this junk, all this junk. I'm going to get them all running good, chains all sharpened, and I'm putting them on Craigslist and selling them. Except that one. That's Bev's right there. I gotta, I'm got i going to fix that and give it back to her. So uh, I'm done. I'm only buying steels. Now, I don't have any experience with Husqvarna, but a friend of mine worked at a rental center and he said that uh, they rented steels and Husqvarna's and of course you know through the through the course of people people who don't own them using them naturally they would be uh, in need of repairs frequently and he said not only were they you know about they broke down about the same amount the steel and the Husqvarna, Husqvarna but some of the part numbers were the same so who knows? Uh, I don't, myself, I don't have any experience with Husqvarna, but I have heard way better things about them than the pull-ons. Yeah, I know they're pronounced Poland or Poolin, but uh, having had this amount of pull-ons for so many years, that's what I call them. I'll tell you what, I guarantee you one arm is longer than the other for trying to start these for all those years. So there's my, uh, my mini review. I'm sticking with steel from now on. If I can't afford a steel saw, I'm just not going to buy a new saw. Tired of working on them. Uh, I don't actually mind working on them, but I'm tired of working on them when I need them. So uh, today, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to get it running good. I'm going to sharpen the blade, the chain, uh, and I'm going to give it back to Bev. And she'll be able to have that in her shed. And whenever she needs a saw, there'll be one ready. And uh, the home light... And these three Polans, as soon as I get them cranked and running, they are out of here. And uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to that or what's wrong with it. I may not be able to fix it, but uh, the part is uh, 20 bucks from Jack Small Engines. So if I screw it up and I need to order a part, it's, you know, 20 bucks. That ain't bad. It's a flywheel. And, uh, and then I'll show you my new purchase because... Uh, we got a place up in Minden called Hallmont Sales, and they sell steel. And I called them this morning to see if they had the uh, the 180 uh, CBE in, and they actually do, and it's on sale right now. So I'll show you that when I get it. Uh, let me let me also tell you about this little heater. Uh, Y'all remember that heater, the the heater of lies. <laughs> I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call it that from now on, the heater of lies. <laughs> But uh, I'll tell you what, it, it heats, this room here is uh, 450 square foot, and uh, it heats this room up in like minutes. As a matter of fact, I'm fixing to shut it down because uh, I'm going to be sloshing this around and it's still got gas in it. So I'm really, really happy with this thing. There's medium, there's low, there's off.
me. And uh, you know, it doesn't get too hot. Uh, you can touch everything. Um, really, that was a wise trade there. Even even though the guy lied to me, it was just a simple fix. But uh, good trade. I was never going to use that buffer again. And I actually paid less for the buffer than this costs brand new. This is like 150 that neighborhood, 130 from Northern Tool. It's called a uh, Pro Temp. And you can get them at Northern Tool. I think it's a, I looked it up. I think it's in the $150 range, somewhere like that. But anyway, it's a nice little heater and heats it up real quick in here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the, uh, the recoil starter housing off. It's just a couple of screws. And uh, let me get that off and I'll show you what's under there. All right, that's what it looks like behind that. And let me show you what the inside looks like, and I'll show you what the problem is. These little dogs, I have no idea what the technical name is, because like John says, I'm just a dude. I'm not an expert in anything, but I like to take stuff apart. Those dogs are spring-loaded, and their natural position is that. You see how uh, it was actually stuck in its closed position? This would be the opposite. This one is supposed to be the same direction. I can move it if I pry it with a screwdriver. And what has happened is this little rivet was peened over too hard. I had to go back into my phone and delete a whole bunch of stuff. I'll tell you what, this is a uh, 16 gigawatt memory and ain't nowhere near enough. And uh, Apple keeps adding their own crap to my phone every time I update it. And I can't delete their crap that I don't use off my phone. So their crap is taking up memory that I need to do videos. Anyway, let me get back to the video. This rivet that holds that in was peened over too hard and this won't open and close. This one was almost as bad. Uh, I put some oil on it and you know, it'll, it'll work about half the time. So what I'm gonna do is take a chisel, a very small, very thin blade chisel and try to get behind that rivet and unpeen it some all the way around. I'm gonna have to do this one too so it'll be more dependable because it does stick that, see? like that. And what was happening is this thing would stall out constantly and I'd have to reach in here with a screwdriver, kick that open like that to get it cranked back up. And then, you know, the next time it would stall, this would be on its lock closed. So anyway, that's what I'm going to try to fix. I'm going to take this off. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's 7 16 No, that's it. All right, let me get my other wrench. These are, uh, 25 Torx 25. That's what that is. So uh, let me get my socket and I'll get this off and, and uh, get my chisel out. Uh, before I go any further, let me just tell the safety Nazis that yes, I disconnected the spark plug, okay? There, there is a, a group of people that just cruise the internet trying to find things that you did wrong. You have the plastic people that got to tell you if you use plastic, it's going to kill you. Uh, you have the mechanical people that, uh, you know, got to remind you to, uh, if you didn't remove the plug wire, they'll sure let you know. You have the gun people who, uh, if you don't show them that your gun is empty, uh, they got to say something about it. Like anybody's going to go take a gun into their shop and work on it. And, but anyway, here is, uh, this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to take a small chisel and try to get behind these and see if I can free these up. Well, uh, I couldn't get a chisel in there. I did get this thing working better, and what it is is this little loop of that spring right there. That loop was getting hung up on that fin, so I bent the loop where uh, it hits that fin on the outside. What was happening was this would open up, and it would get hung up on the inside of that fin, and it wouldn't snap back open. The, the spring would get stuck on it. So that one's gonna work. And uh, <clears throat> I used this the other day with just this one working. 
Now I have two options. I have my Dremel here with a thin blade and I could try to cut, I guess you'd call it a kerf, <laughs> uh, behind the rivet and in front of this little dog. That's gonna look really messy. I might not be able to do it. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, the fins are in the way. So I'm gonna try one other thing. Uh, I have this sacrificial chisel, wood chisel, that I have, uh, I think it's in my truck toolbox. And I call it sacrificial because I use it for stuff it shouldn't be used for. And then I clean it up and, you know, I have good chisels up there that I would never, right there, that I would never do this with. But uh, I have this old chisel that over the years I've used it for things it shouldn't be used for. Even as far as knocking slag off of something I just welded. So let me go locate that. I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to try to get it behind the rivet there and see if I can't pry it up. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to that. And if this doesn't work, uh, I'm going to use this with just this one until the new one comes in, which is 20 bucks. So let me go find that chisel. All right. I was able to... Jeez. That was something come up on my screen. I'll tell you what. Anyway, I was able to use my sacrificial wood chisel to get up under here and uh, I did it from that side and then I did it from this side and I uh, really didn't take a whole lot of wrapping. All right, so uh, we're working. We put it back on. This chain is new. I need to tighten it up and uh, put it back together and then let's see. Oh, I'm working on a very old, well, not very, very old, but uh, hard to find parts for that old. This is a, it's a, uh, eight Harrington Richardson Fieldsman 852. And uh, it needs a firing pin. Let's see. Have I, I've already taken it out, but uh, I'll show you if I can. I can't get the focus that small. This little notch right here, maybe here. <laughs> now, there we go. That little notch has got about 330 seconds of wear on it. And uh, I could, you see, see where it's worn? I could weld, weld it and then grind it to where I need it, and then it might last, uh, you know, a couple hundred rounds. But uh, I want to get this working. Uh, I finally got the, the elevator just right to feed reliably. Uh, I need an extractor claw, two extractor claws. Actually, I need one, this one. And uh, hard to find, so I'll get this... I'll get it working. Uh, the firing pin's the main thing. I may be able to shave that extractor claw a little bit and make it work some more. I'm just trying to get it into fireable condition. But anyway, we're back to the chainsaw. I'll put it back together and we're done. And uh, the last little clip, I'll show you uh, the new chainsaw I'm fixing to go get. Alright, let's go get our, our new chainsaw. Welcome home. I was going to go with the 170 at first, and then uh, I was going to go with the 180. And for just a few dollars more, I got the 211. You know you got to pay for these stupid cases. That almost made me not want to buy it from them. All right, uh, I'm going to be using this tomorrow. Maybe I'll take a little footage of me cutting.
case you forgot what I look like, I'm a fat guy, so don't be shocked when you see a fat guy with a chainsaw. <laughs>